I'm Kalina Staub. I am a lecturer at the University of Toronto, Mississauga, and today I'm going to be presenting Tiny Lady Big Classroom, the lessons I learned and I'm still learning my first year as a young female professor in a large lecture environment. So just a bit of background about me. I completed my graduate studies at Duke University in 2013, and in my fourth year in graduate school, I decided that I wanted to pursue a teaching track position. Um, and so I started getting a lot of teaching experience, and all of this teaching experience was in a small classroom setting. So I was teaching classes of you know, seven students up to 30 students. Um, and then I graduated and got a job at the University of Toronto Mississauga, which I began last fall. And right off the bat, I was teaching three classes. Two were 377 students in an introductory economics class, and one was 200 students in an intermediate micro class. Um, so it was a huge change and a big learning experience for me. Um, so kind of the goals of the presentation are just to review some of the expected and unexpected challenges I faced in my first year and discuss some of the t steps I've taken between the first and the second year to address these challenges and some of the lessons that I've learned. So some of the expected challenges that I knew were going to happen teaching large classes. First, I have a huge fear of public speaking. And when I'm in front of a class of 400 students, it's even worse. Um, and I think a lot of this kind of flows into my next point. I have a huge fear of getting asked questions that I'm not gonna know how to respond to in front of a lot of people and I'm gonna feel like an idiot. Um, and along with these fears that I had, I had things that I just knew were going to be challenges. Like lots of students equals lots of administration. Lots more grading, lots more emails to deal with and I wasn't used to dealing with those things. And a new, I was moving to a new campus in a new country and with that it was going to come, you know, having to learn new policies, uh, new university culture. So along with these expected challenges, I also faced some unexpected challenges that I just did not anticipate at all. And a lot of these had to do with um, behavioral issues and issues surrounding a lack of respect in the classroom and outside of the classroom from not only students but also TAs and graders. I had a couple instances where students yelled at me in class or during a test. Students are disruptive during class. And additionally, I get lots of emails from students asking for you know, special considerations. Even though we have these policies outlined in the syllabus, oh, I missed the test, can you make an exception for me this time? So in addition to these, um, these issues that I had with some students, I also had issues with my graders and TAs where I would meet and discuss the, you know, the expectations that I had for them each week or with each assignment. And you know, they wouldn't fulfill these expectations. I'd get the graded work back and it would be so, slop so sloppily done that I would have to redo half of it. Um, and that was a huge thing that I didn't expect to have to deal with my first year. Um, so what I'd like to focus on now are some of the lessons that I've learned and some of the things that I've done to address these issues between the first and second year. Um, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is, I found that clarity and consistency are really, really important. It's very important to clearly articulate what your policies are and stick to them. In the syllabus, I now have, you know, I knew some of the issues that were gonna come up from the first year and I was able to craft a policy for every issue that came up the previous year and that I could foresee happening in the future and not only did I explain what my policy is regarding that issue, but I also articulated the reasons behind that policy so the students could see where I'm coming from. So for instance, for students who are coming to class late, I have this policy which I had trouble sticking with last year because I, you know, I didn't like yelling at students in the middle of class that they needed to go back outside. Um, but the room that I lecture in, you know, I'm lecturing up at the front and there are two doors on either side of me where the students would enter and exit. And so it's right in my peripheral vision and they're walking right in front of the other students who are trying to pay attention. So you know, in the syllabus I explain that it's very distracting for me and very distracting for others. So if the doors are closed and class is started, you need to wait outside and I'll come get you after you know, when we have a first, our first natural break or we're doing our first exercise and lecture. So you know, 10, 15 minutes into the lecture, I'll go outside and I'll let the late students in. And I had a really hard time enforcing that policy my first year, but this year I've been enforcing it 
And the students seem to be receptive to the fact that I want them to have the best lecture experience possible. And part of that is we're not going to have interruptions from students coming in late. Um, so another thing that I do is I have my students now review the syllabus and complete an, uh, an assignment um, where basically it's just a statement that they have to say, yes, I agree with this, or no, I don't. And the statement is, I've read the syllabus thoroughly and completely, and I understand the expectations of me in this course and what I can expect from this course. And as soon as they answer yes and submit that assignment, they ha can have access to all the materials on our course Blackboard site. And what I'm hoping this does, um, and I think it's, it seems to be working, is it communicates to the students that the syllabus is a very important document, and I view it as a very important document, and I'm going to abide by those policies that I've articulated in the syllabus. And so when I tell them, go wait outside, don't interrupt my lecture, they understand, fingers crossed, where I'm coming from. So in addition to the policies that I have clearly articulated for um, my students, I also needed to have a policy clearly articulated for myself on how I was going to deal with questions during class. Um, I found in the first year, I, you know, if students would ask questions, I would spend time, you know, you know, sometimes students ask really good questions during class, and sometimes they do not have a strong enough grasp on the material to ask an intelligent question. And so the questions, I would spend, you know, a minute, two minutes trying to figure out what they were even asking so that I could respond to it. So this year, I've adopted a policy where if, we're, if I'm in lecture and a student has a question, and it takes me more than 10 seconds to either understand what they're asking or craft a response that is clear and won't confuse more people, I'll answer it. Because I do want to address my students' questions. But if it's going to take me a while to craft a response, or if I don't think it's a very well thought out question, I'll tell the student to think about their question and post it on the, the course discussion board, or come talk to me about it during office hours, because I'm more than happy to discuss any issues with them during office hours, and I'm happy to answer any questions that they have on the discussion board. And then at the end of the week, I take all the really good questions that I've gotten, and I write out a weekly wrap up for the students that I send out to everyone so that everybody can benefit from the really good questions that their peers are having about the material. And in addition to these, these policies I have regarding lecture and students, I also found that it was going to be beneficial for me to clearly articulate my expectations to graders and TAs. Instead of just sitting down and telling them what I expected, I wrote out a document for both my TAs and my graders that tell them exactly what I expect from each week in their tutorial sessions, um, in their office hours, when they're grading an assignment, how they should be grading it, how much they need to meet with me, what they need to do before they start grading it, after they grade it, before it's handed back to me, how I want them alphabetized, staples removed, et cetera. Um, and that, I'm hoping, will cut down on the amount of extra work that I have to do this year to make up for the work that the TAs and graders were not doing um, because they just, I don't think, understood the expectations that I had for them. So I think having these, um, these clear policies really articulated and sticking to them affects the students' perceptions of not only, you know, they, they know what their expectations are in the course, the graders know what expectations I have for them, but I think it also communicates that I care a lot about how the course is being run, and I've put a lot of thought into the experience that I want them to have. So I think it kind of lends a little credibility and hopefully builds the respect that they have for me as an instructor. And so kind of building off this idea of student perceptions, I took a workshop this summer about communication in the classroom. And it made me start thinking about the way we present ourselves in the classroom. And I'd never really thought that much about it before. We talked about things like how to dress, how the body language, your tone of voice, um, a bunch of things that you, know, you kind of think about, but you don't really realize how important they are to shape student perceptions. Um, so my second lesson that I've learned is it's important to dress for success. And so you know, what I mean by this is my natural tendency and what I would love to be able to do is just roll out of bed in the morning and throw on some jeans, a t-shirt, and my chacos, put my hair in a ponytail, and like wander into class and give like an awesome lecture. Students really respected it and loved it. 
Um, but that's not feasible. Um, I've decided that it's, for me it's worth that extra 10 minutes to put on an outfit that looks mildly professional, put on a little bit of makeup, and really try to create that distinction between, um, that, that visual distinction between peer to my students and authority figure to my students. Um, so I, you know, it's something that I'd never really thought about, you know, how, how I presented myself visually to my students, but I think that this year it, it gives me it gives me a little bit of extra confidence, first of all, but I think it also kind of creates that distinction between authority figure and peer. Um, and the, so one of the last things that I learned is that it's really important to ask for help. So I'm really lucky to be in an environment where there are just a ton of really just excellent and helpful educators with tons of experience, and they want to share that experience. Uh, so over the past year, I've met with a lot of faculty members in the economics department and across other departments in the university. I've gone to lots of teaching workshops put on by our Center for Teaching and Learning. Um, and I've learned that there are a ton of great ideas out there. And it's really important to try these new ideas out, but also realize that some things that work really well for one person are not going to work really well for you. So you have to ask for help, but then also be patient with yourself because becoming the educator that you want to be is really a learning process and it's not going to happen in one year or two years. It's, it's just a continual process of improvement. Um, so yeah, be patient with yourself.